Hello guys, my name is Costanza and welcome to my YouTube channel A Medica Broad. And if you haven't already, don't forget to like this video to help this video spread around and subscribe below. Don't forget, I've also recently released a crash course for new junior doctors just like you to help you know how to settle into to the NHS and to learn the specific skills you'll probably need, discharge summaries, dealing with the acutely ill patient, writing your patient notes and more. So don't forget there's more details about that in the description box below. So today I was like you know what let's do a kind of random video that I think will be absolutely helpful and I think will be beneficial to you. A kind of new series of tips and tricks for those who are coming to join the NHS in addition to my already released crash course as I said down below. So today I'm going to do my first video in this series and we're going to be talking about my actual first jobs in the NHS. If you didn't know this already I was born and raised in the UK. I applied for university here but unfortunately I didn't manage to get in but in fact it was actually the best thing for me. I ended up doing biomedical science here in London and then I went off to study and complete a doctor of medicine abroad in Eastern Europe. So after I did that I thought I really want to come back home, I really want to come back to the NHS so I ended up scouring and looking for jobs and things and try to get into things in that way. I'll probably have to do another video in more detail about the process of applying for jobs, interview preparation, stuff like that. So just for today I'm going to do a kind of relatively short video about my actual first jobs. So my first job was actually through an agency um, and so I was a locum doctor. A locum doctor, if you didn't really, really know this before, is someone who is providing a service to the hospital or sometimes general practices and is working as a doctor but is not employed by the trust. The trust actually uses agencies outside who come in and bring doctors like you or your friends or family in and then we come and help out on the wards and filling gaps and we're paid accordingly. Our pay typically is a little bit higher or even a lot more higher than those who are on the trust jobs like the typical FY2 jobs, the typical FY1 jobs because you don't have the security of being in a kind of long term contract the pensions and stuff like that you don't get those sorts of things so you get a premium on top because essentially if you don't work you don't get paid so my first job was like I said a locum job I went straight into a senior house officer position or an equivalent to an F2 position this is because one I graduated having completed an internship which is an FY1 equivalent in Bulgaria but I also didn't really want to go through the process of FY1 again. So I just kind of essentially got the GMC full license to practice and went straight into FY2 or SHO level. This is what senior house officer stands for. So my first job was actually in a place I didn't anticipate going to, but once again, that was an amazing experience. I ended up working in Aberdeen in Scotland. Um, at that time I was working at Aberdeen Royal Infirmary Hospital and it was an amazing experience. I was based in the general slash renal medicine department on the day shifts but unlike most locums who tend to do nine to fives, I was actually on the full rotor. So I did seven days a week, I did four nights in a row, I did the typical night shifts, day shifts, 12 hour shifts, 10 hour shifts, eight hour shifts that other doctors normally do who are in the trust compared to those who do locum. And it was very strenuous. The timetable on the rotor was very tiring, very exhausting. But on the plus side, I was very well supported um, in terms of helping me get to where I need to be. Um, the consultants were very approachable. It was an amazing learning experience and my learning curve quadrupled. So basically, if you're worried about jumping, quote unquote, into SHO or FY2 level in NHS, I personally believe it's very possible. Obviously, initially I was a bit dubious, but I feel like it's all to do with your mindset. How you think is how you will be. Um, so, my, so a man thinketh, so is he. So if you feel you're going to fail, if you feel you're going to slack, if you feel 
think are going to be up to scratch that's exactly what will be but I have released a video quite a few weeks ago um, which I'll probably hopefully add at the top here um, which is very good with helpful tips for your first job but anyway like I said I was locum in in Aberdeen I was there for about three months um, and I did lots of night shifts as well covering everything from cardiology I was also in the cardiac critical unit I was also dealing with the primary line which is where paramedics will contact you to look at an ECG if the ECG shows sign of uh, MI then you can call the patient in and they'll be prepped for a emergency PCI um, intervention because they've got like a big clot in their heart or whatnot or blockage inside the coronary arteries so it was quite a good experience to be honest if you're wanting to learn it's all about throwing yourself in the deep end like hiding from stuff and although you're going to be scared but not putting yourself forward means you'll never grow and I found that that was the best decision for me I learned so much by just throwing myself into that job and pushing myself forward and doing the night shifts and I grew so much so I was only there for three months. Around the last month, they were saying they wanted to extend my contract, but I really wanted to be back home closer to my family, which are generally based in London. And London's my home. London's where I've grown up. London is just, it's just, I love London. So I was applying for jobs around the last month of my initial three month contract. And then I managed to successfully get some interviews. Um, my most favorite interview, which I also was successful in, led to my second job. Did, um, my second job in the NHS in September uh, 2021. So basically, that job, um, I got that for an interview. Um, I applied through the NHS system. I probably will have to do another video on that, like I said and it was quite a enjoyable interview to be honest the vibes and in the interview was just vibing i was just living my best life to the point where even up to this day i bump into those consultants who interviewed me and they remember stuff about me like my book the fact that i want to do tropical medicine they literally remember stuff about me because we kind of vibed so that was when I knew I got that job. I kind of knew, I told my family I got that job. And ironically, about half an hour later, I decided to go to the shop to celebrate, get some ice cream, because I felt like I did well, despite not knowing the result yet. And on my way, the manager actually rang me. I was like, Sansa, I just want to let you know you've got that job. And I was proper gassed. I was so happy. I was excited. I was living my best life. And I ran home, spoke to my family, told my best friends I was so excited and so happy. And so I ended up back in London. So most recently, this job that I ended up in London is a trust based job but it's like a LAS so a locum appointment of service so I'm there to fill in gaps in the hospital thankfully it's quite rare but I managed to secure a rotational post it's at the level of SHO it's uh, a trust job and they also gave me access to the e-portfolio the rotations were are free rotations as a whole six months in A&E which I've just started about a month ago and six months in general medicine. General medicine was split into um, three months in renal medicine, um, which was a very good experience, very detailed, very, I learned a lot there. And then another three months in respiratory medicine, acute respiratory medicine. Um, I was dealing with CPAPs, dealing with a lot of ABGs, so that was a very good place to learn ABGs. Um, and chest infections, viral infections, so many ABGs, VBGs, oxygen, um, nebulizers, stuff like that. And like I said more recently, my third rotation is six months in A&E and I'm thoroughly enjoying it. I've also spent some time in pediatric A&E as well. And I'm so blessed that I've been given this opportunity. To be honest, I'm so thankful that I've had this opportunity to have these two jobs. Um, and I've learned so much from them already, which is what I'm trying to pass on to you. Hence why I made my crash course, details below. And just to let you know, there's an important thing about having some support and having allocated teaching. 
but when you come to these jobs i must warn you you're not going to be handheld there's not going to be a lot of time and a lot of resources to spend a lot of time with you so if you don't know ask make sure you don't you know do things on your own that you're not strong strong enough to do and no one to escalate your senior and that's it really this contract ends in september um so i'm kind of looking into where i want to go after either being in the hospital where i am or going elsewhere and i'm also trying to look into getting some infectious diseases experience or tropical medical experience so that's also been on my mind as well um but yeah enjoy this video don't forget to like comment and subscribe if you want me to cover a certain thing in a video don't forget to leave uh information down below questions or topics or things you want me to talk about and we're going to go into them over the next coming weeks and i hope you've enjoyed this clip or this video bye guys